If you're talking about the distribution of cultural material, of, of music and, and cinema, well, there is a long history of whatever the incumbent industry happens to be resisting whatever new technology provides. Back in the 1600s, print brought with it a new abundance of information, threatening the control of ideas. Basically, what happened with the printing press was that books were made cheap. You could, you could print off thousands of them and just give them away. Really, they were small packets of information that could be transported all over Europe and then the world. Ideas could spread much faster. Back in colonial times, you could run a printing press for about $10,000. You could print thousands of pamphlets, most likely full of political, social, or religious speech. These affectionately termed paper bullets were used in America for quite a while. The most famous one being Thomas Paine's Common Sense. By the Civil War, you needed about $2.5 million to run a printing press. The newspapers became commercialized, not just anybody could distribute. Once commercialized, the newspaper became a one-dimensional medium, no longer benefiting from the contributions of all. What is a one-dimensional medium? This is a culture where creativity is consumed, but the consumers are not creators. John Philip Sousa went to Congress in 1906 to complain about something. He was not a fan of talking machines. He said that because these talking machines could record the human voice, that they were stifling creativity in America. In the 1920s, radio was a common technology, in the sense that an extraordinary range of people were radio broadcasters. After commercial enterprises started thinking of radio as something that could be used for advertising, the FCC started allocating and sectioning off parts of the electromagnetic spectrum to different businesses and government entities. By the 1930s, NBC and CBS would be responsible for an astounding 97% of content on the radio. In other words, radio too became a one-directional medium. In the 1980s, Home Taping is Killing Music was an anti-copyright campaign done by the BPI, the British Photographic Industry. They feared and said record sales were already dropping because people were using cassette tapes to copy. Probably the best known case in all of copyright infringement was when Universal Studios and Walt Disney sued Sony. Back then, Sony had just come out with this thing called Betamax which allowed you to put a tape in a machine connected to your television. That machine would make a quality copy of whatever was on your television. With that copy, you could replicate that copy as many times as you liked. You could watch the same show over and over again, only paying once. Universal Studios and Disney of course said it was ruining artistic development in the country. Over the years, we've seen these industries and the powers that be be horribly wrong in what they're saying. Amateur content creators. When radio came out, we published our own stuff. Amateur content creators. The cassette tapes came out, we made mixtapes. And when the web came out, we made our own web pages. And now we have blogs, podcasts, and video blogs. People just like to make things. Look at this video and video blog. Look at YouTube. <laughs> On YouTube, they're replaying. <laughs> Remixing. <laughs> Recreating. I don't know doing. They're sharing ideas. So many different kinds of people from all over the world, and they're doing it for their own love of what they're doing. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's your boy David Sides. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for um, tutorials for my song, Apologize. running through the song slowly so that you guys can see how to play it and then you guys can go ahead and um, add your own little twist to it yourselves. And it just repeats after that and then you guys can go ahead and um, add your
your own little twist to it yourself. Story of my life, searching for the right, but it keeps avoiding me. Sorrow in my soul, but it seems that wrong really loves my company. These people are collaborating and creating. This is not the face of artistic destruction. So why is it that they're telling us all this stuff? Panic of the movie industry and the music industry is that people could actually start to produce and that file sharing networks, file sharing technology enables them to produce. People like to communicate, people like to do, to share things, people like to transform things and technology makes it so easy that there's no way of stopping it. Our urge to communicate is so strong that we have always pushed the tools available to us to the limit then gone beyond them. All of the emerging nation states of, of Europe uh, made it very clear that they would control information flows to the best of their ability. We recognize and we know that we will never stop piracy. Never. We just have to try to make it as difficult and as uh, tedious as possible. You had uh, a very elaborate system of censorship but in addition to that, you had a monopoly of production in a booksellers guild in Paris. It had police powers. What a way to make friends. It's a plan that can't fail. Call your customers off to jail. So they're losing their control. But what would anybody losing their control want back? Phone companies now say they're going to build a new network of internet service that will be even better than the one they promised in the 90s, but never produced. Once again, though, they want something in return. They want control. Of net neutrality. I'm not even sure what that means. Net neutrality is this. If I pay to connect to the net with a given quality of service, and you pay to connect to the net, with the same or a higher quality of service, then you and I can communicate across the net with that quality of service. That's all. Phone and cable companies want to become traffic controllers. Now, if you listen to their arguments on why we should have we should get rid of network neutrality, it goes as this: that they just they want to be able to please the customer and be able to provide a higher quality of service for more used web applications and sites. Say, like Google, like Yahoo, eBay, and like with the printing press and newspapers and radio and cassette and video and CD and DVD, this is the same commercialization we've seen over and over again that leads to a one-directional medium. In newspapers, how much of the content is generated just by some amateur random person. Uh, 10%? How about the radio you listen to? 5%? How about the television shows you watch? 0%? It doesn't need to have to happen again. We've let it happen over and over and over and over again. Most people don't even know this is happening. AT&T says it has plans to implement piracy filters. Many other smaller ISPs have these plans already underway or, or they're on the books. Comcast was found to be blocking, technically controlling or throttling, the, the blocking traffic that they didn't like. But look, they're being called out by groups like the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. What can you do to help? Help yourself. Participate in one of the most amazing and opportunistic eras in human history where you have free access to so much knowledge every minute of every day. The situation is unprecedented in, in human history and it is a force that will not be stopped.